Welcome back everyone. I'm Jason and you're watching Jason Jensen Trains. In today's episode, we're going to be working on this structure right here. So we're going to be finishing this and then we're going to build a brick foundation that goes under it that looks like it's built right into the side of this cliff. Then we're going to build a platform a wood platform up on this level and then a wood platform on the lower level. <laughs> we are then going to build a wood elevator that runs between the two. All right, this is a big project, so let's get to it. To finish our building, we need to do the windows. Now, I sprayed all the windows with a gray primer and I just did a quick light misting just so that the uh, paint had something to stick to. I then brushed on some iced coffee over them. Then with a sponge, I used uh, light buttermilk. So now I'll take these off. We'll put acetate in the back of these and then glue all of our windows on. And I also, um, sponged on some light buttermilk onto our trim. Okay, so all of the doors and windows are done and glued on. I still have uh, a little one to put there and a little one on the other side. You notice I put uh, tar paper on the roof and I just use uh, black construction paper or black craft paper and I cut them a half inch. Sometimes I do three eighths of an inch. So um, I wouldn't go any smaller than three eighths and I wouldn't go any bigger than a half inch. So you just cut a bunch of strips, glue them on. I then took some sandpaper and roughed it up. This is 150 grit sandpaper. I then took some gray dry brush paint and did some dry brushing. Okay, I'm gonna take a little break from this structure. We still have uh, stuff to do on it, signs. We have signs on the roof to add. Um, but next, we're gonna work on the foundation. So this sits on uh, the edge of a cliff. So the whole backside uh, basically is a brick uh, retaining wall uh, that sort of supports the back end of this. So let's work on that next. So I've made this little retaining wall. So that sits on there just like that. Now we need to cover this with brick and in a previous episode, I showed how I made this. So I made my own brick paper. And so now we're just gonna cut it and glue it onto this. Now I could have made this out of laser cut wood, like uh, a company called Monster Model Works. Um, and I believe KC Workshop. They all make wood that's laser cut with a brick pattern, but a lot of this is going to get covered with wood and you'll see um, when we get to that point. And then there's going to be a lot of like bushes and greenery growing up it. So um, not much of it's really going to end up showing. So I'm just marking it with my pencil right on the edge where it needs to fold. Then we put our ruler on it and then very lightly we drag our blade over it just to score it so that it folds really nice. Thank you. 
<laughs> of course, it's a little short. Let's see, we could end it right on that bend, or we could try to match up the pattern. Mm, let's end it on that fold. Okay, to attach this, let's use some double-sided tape. This is from 3M. My good friend Dave Kruiswick um, sent this to me. I had never used it before, and I absolutely love it. So thank you, Dave. This is awesome. Now all we do is peel off, peel off the Okay, it's very very sticky. Okay, next we have to build two platforms, one at this level and one at the lower level. Um, but let me back up a second. We're going to be putting an elevator that goes right here. And I'm using an elevator from a FOSS scale kit called Rust Rock Falls. So here are all the parts that we're going to be using. So I've got all my wood stained. I first stained it. I dipped it right in the bottle of murky brown. And then I let it dry. And then I dipped it in the bottle of aged barn wood. So I think it gives it a really nice color. Um, it's still a little wet. So we got to let this dry. And... I'm starting to work on this part of the elevator. Now I'm working on the gears uh, that are the pulley system at the top. I'll show you, I have one done. Now I'm building another one. There's a hole in the center for a rod to go through. So you just want to make sure that they're lined up. So I'm just using a straight pin to make sure. So I just sprayed a gray primer. These are the rods that go up both sides in between this that guide it. So now we'll get this um, looking like metal and rust. Okay, well this is where we're at so far. And I won't lie, I have completely slowed down on this project. Um, scratch building this has really, um, this just slowed me down. It's taking longer than what I thought it would. Uh, but that's okay. Um, I first started by cutting a paper pattern. I cut one for the top, and then I cut one for the bottom. Uh, much easier to cut 
out of paper and make changes if you need to on the paper rather than actually doing it with the wood. Um, and I did have to make changes. So it took me a little while just to get the uh, pattern exactly how I wanted it. Okay, then I started working on the sides. You'll see that it has a rail right down the center. Now this could actually be a working elevator. It has these little tabs and those tabs fit inside that space. So it actually slides up and down. So those two get put in there on both sides and I'll put those up from the bottom. And then of course we have to build uh, the framework around the top to hold uh, the gears and the mechanism to make it go up and down. Um, now to build these I used for the whole thing really I've been using my digital calipers to get exact measurements and then once I have the exact measurements and I need to cut pieces that are all the same length you can see all these I then use my chopper so you can loosen this put this exactly where you want it by using measuring it out with your calipers say right there then slide this over tighten it down and then just take your wood and slide it right up to that and cut slide it up that piece again cut and you just keep cutting it and all your pieces are exactly the same so again this has been taking me quite quite a bit of time but it's turning out nice i really like it um now we need to have a little platform there's a metal platform that gets glued right outside of this door on the side and it actually has little sides that we have to glue onto it so we'll get that glued in place and then there's a ladder uh, that ladder gets glued in place right there i don't know if i mentioned but this structure is from a FOSS kit. You can see right here. And it is from Atlas Gorge. This was a large year-end kit from 2020. So you can see it there. It also had these that attached to it, but I used those um on another build on another kit bash and we have quite a bit left to do on this you can see we have all the signs to add and all of the rooftop details okay here's where we're at so far Okay, next we have to put the uh, pulley system on the top here. Well, after quite a bit of work, <laughs> I finally got the uh, pulley system in place. Well, as you can see, I'm just brushing on some pigments and uh, really just creating some shadows and just some variety. I guess it also gives it a little texture. Boy, it doesn't take much of the pigments, not much at all. So 
they last a very long time. Um, I think the pigments are a very good investment for weathering. Okay, here's where we're at so far. I still have to locate uh, two little windows. I don't know. I'll have to look in the instructions to see if they're laser cut or if they're plastic. Oh, and there is another window here, but I was considering covering that up, framing this sign, and possibly putting that right there. I've been so focused on this side that <laughs> I have to remember that the other sides are all visible on the layout. So I need to add some details over here. Uh, now this gets a sign put right there. And then we have another sign and I think I may just put that right there. I've done some light weathering on the signs with the pigments. Now we're just going to make wooden frames around them using the thin uh, strip wood. Now my method for this is cutting the pieces that go on the side first. And then we put a long one across the top and a long one across the bottom. I guess I do it this way because the uh, top piece and the bottom piece then overlap um, the thickness of the wood on both sides. Hopefully that makes sense. So now we'll quick glue on all these side pieces, then cut our top and bottom. Okay, now we'll cut our top and bottom pieces. Okay, the wood frames are all done. It's really a nice detail to put wood frames around um, certain signs. You know, in the past, I may have not done it just because I didn't want to take the time to do it. I wanted to hurry up and get the model finished. So I just said, well, does it really make that big a difference? Does it really change the look of the model having a wood frame around those signs? So I would talk myself out of it. Or I would drag my feet and procrastinate on doing it. So that used to happen a lot. And now I guess I've changed my internal dialogue meaning now i tell myself um, there's nothing that i don't like about the hobby so in the past years ago i didn't like doing windows and so it would slow me down when i would get to that part of the the kit and now uh, i just i tell myself that it's not difficult and that I enjoy every aspect of it. And I guess after a while, if you keep telling yourself that, it really just becomes true. Because now I really do. I love every aspect of the build. Whether it's windows, roofing, painting details, um everything it's just it's all fun for me now and so i maybe that's just from years of telling myself that there's nothing that i don't like to do so i suggest trying that trying to change that internal dialogue um, it really will speed up your model building <laughs> it is hard to work and 
talk at the same time. I will tell you, though, I've gotten a lot better at it. And maybe some of you have noticed since my first, my first year doing videos compared to videos that I do now. I think everything's improved. I think the production of the videos, the quality of the image, quality of the sound, lighting. Um, I continue to try to improve all the time. Now, I made one post longer than the others. So we'll poke a hole in the roof and put the longer one in that hole. Then we can build our um, angle support pieces behind it. Just cleaning up any extra glue. Okay, yeah, I like that. So now I'll pull that out um, and then put some glue, put it back in place, and then add some angle supports behind it. You want to make sure you rinse that brush good to get any glue out of it. You don't want that glue drying in your brush. Okay, you know, this sign, like I said, I think we'll just glue that right there. I'm just going to hold this for a second until it sets up. Okay, now we'll put this one right there. Now we'll have to build some posts that come down. We'll probably do four of them. Um, but I'm gonna have to wait because I'm going to have to put, there's a concrete driveway that gets put right next to this. And so we'll have to cut that out of styrofoam, paint and weather it, put glue that in place, and then build our uh, posts, our little pillars, um, according to that. Okay, our signs are done. Now, obviously, we still have to do our angled supports that go behind the signs. I'm so excited. I just got a package in the mail that I opened. And I am going to share this with all of you. Now this is something for the sci-fi layout. Now I took a chance on this because it didn't say a scale on it. But from what I could tell, it looked like the figures that go with this would be 3 inches tall. And the figures on my sci-fi layout are three and three quarters of an inch tall. Some of them are even four inches tall. So uh, I took a chance and I ordered this. And I believe it was, I think I paid like $35, $36 for it. <laughs> okay, let me uh, see if I can... I am zoomed out as far as I can. Uh, let me take the camera off. Give me one second. Okay, so here it is. This is from the new Buzz Lightyear movie. Now again, it's a little bit small, but I think it's going to work. Um, here are the figures and I believe those figures are like I said I think they're three inches tall so we will be painting this and rusting it uh, I want to make it look like it's been repaired many many times uh, maybe different colored panels um, <laughs> again rust uh, I may add some 
rivets here and there um, lots of possibilities with this Okay, well, as you can see, I think it's going to work uh, pretty well with uh, this scale figure. Very nice. Um, I'll even put one inside. Yes, <laughs> very nice. All right, well, <laughs> as you can see, I get very easily sidetracked. Okay, let's real quick uh, rust up these signs. Now you want to make sure you get a really fine pattern. You don't want large dots. You want them pretty small. And we want to focus on the edges. I will cut these all out. Now you want to use a brand new blade when cutting these out. Just makes it a lot easier. Okay, now we'll take our dark brown marker, any dark brown. You could even use a gray if you wanted to. And you want to go quick when you do this. Because if you go really slow, it'll just bleed into the paper. And sometimes you may want to go slow and let it bleed, especially in the corners. It just adds uh, more of a rust look. All right, I'll finish this up and then we'll get them all glued on. Okay, before we glue our signs on, let's take a sharp number two pencil and poke some holes in the corners and we're not poking all the way through the paper we're just twisting it and the graphite uh, leaves a silver mark that looks like a nail head so i know it's been a little while since I did my last video and things have been pretty busy around here uh, my son graduated from high school which is very exciting uh, my daughter just finished her second year of college and I've been extremely busy with work and trying to get some modeling done so <laughs> it's just non-stop which is great um, it's exciting uh, but man time is just going faster and faster it seems like so I am no longer mr. taxi driver <laughs> no more after-school events um, it feels pretty nice okay let me show you one of these quick. Maybe you can see the, I hope you'll be able to see the, the silver. All right, now let's get these all glued on. Okay, I think I'll put those two there, these two right here and then we'll rotate this and work on the other side.
I need to actually get some bigger signs to fill this up. But for now, we'll, we'll use these. Well, we still need our two small windows. And then, obviously, we'll be putting a lot of details. Crates, barrels, pallets, um, a bunch of details once we get it placed on the layout. Oh, and we still need to add our angled uh, supports for the signs. And I should probably take some pigments and do some weathering on these other walls so it matches the weathering on this side. But you know, let's take this over to the layout and see what it looks like so far. Okay, the moment of truth. This is so exciting. Hopefully I carved enough away. <laughs> nice. Now, like I've mentioned, we need to put a uh, concrete driveway right there that we'll make out of styrofoam. And we'll have a sidewalk that runs through here. And then that driveway will go in right right in between the buildings there. It is so exciting seeing this entire area come to life. All right, we have some very exciting episodes coming up because we are coming up on the three year anniversary of this layout. Um, actually, July 19th will be the three year mark. And by that time, I want all the track done on the lower level, which means I need to paint and weather it and get it all laid down. Uh, but before we do that, um, all of the white styrofoam that you see behind me against that back wall is all just sitting there. So we need to remove all of those structures get that white styrofoam glued in place and then there is a closet over in the corner and we need to cut a piece of styrofoam that fits in that opening and then paint clouds on it then we can get all of our track laid we can start to get buildings put in place uh, so we have some exciting videos coming up between now and July 19th. So stay tuned. All right. Well, that's all I have for you today. So until next time, stay motivated and happy modeling, everyone.